Would you wait until November 11th for Wakanda? Without question, yet Black Panther 2 is coming close to its release, and as you can tell, our Wakandan spirits are at all-time high. Every day we get something new that makes us stop like an antelope in headlights. Out of excitement, of course, this time is some brand new photos revealing the main villains and lead heroes. We'll dissect the images in today's video. To begin with, Black Panther 2 and its buzzing promotions. After the cultural phenomenon that was Black Panther, a sequel was long due. Sadly, Chadwick Boseman's untimely demise rocked everyone to their core, but the creators decided to channel that grief and create a tribute worthy of the king, Wakanda forever. While we're waiting endlessly for the movie, it was the first trailer that truly electrified the fandom. Thanks to San Diego's Comic-Con, we got a somber yet still engaging trailer that had us hooked. Since then, marketing and promotions have picked up speed. We're getting toy sets, pictures, and cast interviews constantly pumping us up. Every new promotional release is a tease. Take the merch, for example. The recent D23 Expo got a lot of those. One that caught our eye is some Fire, Black Panther, and Dora Milaje backpacks. They also have some matching zip-around wads that will be all the rage soon. We also have uber-cool Lego sets that we'll discuss later in the video, so stay tuned for them. The most exciting of them are some new stills posted by at MCU Facility on Twitter. There are three of them showcasing the heroes and the villains. Keep in mind, these are the most detailed and vibrant up-close promotional images we have till now. It's some super exciting stuff, guys, so what are we waiting for? Let's get right down to it. Moving on, let's check out the women of Wakanda and M'Baku first. Sadly, Chadwick is no longer present, so now it's up to the Wakandan ladies to defend the country amid an empty throne. Go, girl power! They are featured on the first poster in front of a geometric African-inspired mandala. Don't miss the bluish Black Panther emblem on top. We have the first in line to the throne, Shuri, the ferocious Dora Milaje leader, Okoye, and the one-woman army, Nakia. The first thing you'll notice about Shuri in this picture is her new haircut. It's super cool and a far cry from her traditional long locks from the previous film. Dressed in a purple hoodie, the Wakandan princess is giving her best power pose. Another character sporting a hair change is Nakia, holding her weapon of choice, the razor-sharp ring blades. While the spy is sticking to her green palette, the costume is quite an upgrade, covering her arms, unlike the old one. We can totally get behind this change. It's also adorned with a geometric pattern similar to the background. On Shuri is left, Okoye stands tall with her trusty spear right beside her. Not many changes to her costume, but the colors on this one are poppin'. Wait, how can we forget our favorite vegetarian? We also have the mighty M'Baku, who looks like he can kill you, but is a total softy inside. His hair and beard definitely look sharper. Dressed to the nines in the furry Jabari armor, he looks like he's got the ladies back. Not to mention the newcomer, Ironheart. Boosting the female-led group, we have the debutante, Riri Williams, or Ironheart. This is her first rodeo, played by Dominique Thorne, so maybe that's why she got her own poster. It's giving some high-tech vibes, with a neon infamous heart-shaped arc reactor symbol. As for what Riri's wearing, it's an Iron Man-like suit. Many are convinced it's a Mark I costume, only less bulky and sleeker. You can spot the arc reactor on her chest, too. A stark difference from Mark I is that this costume doesn't have a helmet. Instead, Ironheart is wearing goggles. She's pointing her thruster arm at her, promising blasting action. If you can't tell by a solo poster, Dominique's role isn't gonna be a mere cameo. We got a first look at her from the trailer, where Shuri is her mentor. In the comics, Williams is inspired by Tony Stark and builds a suit just like him. While her role in MCU isn't disclosed, we can safely assume Shuri will assist her in creating a vibrating suit. Before this, a Hasbro Titan Hero Series toy set also gave a peek at Ironheart full costume. She's wearing a helmet in this one with more slanted eyes than Iron Man. The suit won the Phantom's approval, mostly getting appreciation. What's more, the genius inventor is getting her own Disney Plus show. D23 convention also screened an exclusive teaser of the show that we haven't got our hands on yet, but hoping to see it very soon. Next, we have the villain's oozing swagger. Now it's time for the dark side to take over. Black Panther 2's villain belonging to an underwater kingdom of Talokan. Talokan is an Aztec-inspired Marvel twist on the legendary kingdom of Atlantis. We're guessing the changes to avoid any similarities with DC's Atlantis. Home to Aquaman, a wise decision no doubt, Namor the Submariner leads the country and is featured front and center in the poster. He's played by the Mexican actor Tenich Huerta, so 10 points to Marvel for accurate representation. Namor is dressed in his royal garb, complete with an over-the-top headgear based on the Aztec Jaguar guard Tepeyotl. The golden Mesoamerican design is hitting all the right spots, and we're super excited for this new bad boy. Accompanying him are Mitzi Mabel Candina's Namora and Alex Livinoli's Atuma. Both of them are well-known supporting characters in the comics. Namora is the Talconian leader's cousin, also known as Aquaria Neptunia. Atuma is Namor's right hand, a warlord heading a barbaric nomadic tribe. He believes he should be the rightful king of the underwater city. That's why he might be the one nudging the Submariner to attack Wakanda in hopes of getting the throne. You'll notice that both Talconians are blue-skinned, but Namor is utterly human. This is because the king is half-human. He was born to a human sea captain and an Atlantean Talconian princess. Many folks are guessing the underwater birth scene we saw in the trailer is his birth. Being a hybrid, he has aquatic abilities all right, but he's not blue like them. He's kind of an anti-hero, so prepare to love him as Killmonger grows on us. What's more, there's no Black Panther yet. Interestingly, we don't have a look at the new Black Panther on the hero's side. Marvel Studios is still keeping it under wraps, but come on, we all know Shuri is next. Her average costume in the poster didn't sit right with us, maybe because her actual gear is the Black Panther suit. Another curious point is her wearing the color purple. The color represents the Panther's power, so we've got you. Add in the fact that she did take up the mantle in comics, and we have all the evidence. Remember how Killmonger burned all the heart-shaped herbs granting the Panther's power? Both happen on the pages and on screen. In comics, Shuri creates her own version of the herbs to be the Black Panther. Then again, 
again. Whispers of Michael B. Jordan secretly in the cast fuel rumors that Killmonger will take charge as a hero this time. M'Baku is another candidate who ruled Wakanda after Shuri and T'Challa were dusted during the blip. Questions? Questions. Hopefully we'll get an answer in the second trailer that's yet to release. We don't have a date for it yet, but you better believe it's on the horizon. In other related news, is Black Panther 2 not releasing in France? Recent reports are saying so. The reason behind this is the French law requiring 17 months till theatrical releases can be streamed on a subscription-based platform. Due to this, none of the Phase 4 movies are streaming in France, so it may not release there and go straight to Disney+. Plus. That requires a mere 4-month release window compared to 17, but you'll have to pay a premiere access cost. The French fans hoping for a theatrical release should be upset just yet. Disney hasn't made a decision, so fingers crossed. Following with, we have a first look at Wakandan vehicles too. Thanks to Legos, we got to see some insanely high-tech Wakandan vehicles. They're part of a Shuri's lab set, and you can build her weapons and a hoverboard. Next, Shuri's Sunbird is a glorious jet with wings that can be folded forward and backward. It also has many figures of Nakia, Ironheart, and Shuri inside her Sunbird. Not to miss out on Namor, the third and last set King Namor's throne, also featuring a Wakandan sub to battle Atuma with shooters. Finally, Letitia Wright is sharing her feelings about Chadwick's absence. While Shuri is feeling her brother's death on screen, Letitia is no different. She calls Chadwick her bro, too, saying it was hard to imagine being on set without my brother. You can tell the cast really was like family. She says she battled the feeling for months, but knew Chad would have wanted them to move forward. That's why the entire cast in Coogler went ahead with a sequel paying respect to Bozeman. Wright says it'll honor him in the most beautiful way. And that's a wrap. What do you think about the Black Panther 2's posters? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like and share the video. Subscribe to our channel for more content just like this. See you in the next one.